Critical care is one of the most important themes of this Congress. And we're very fortunate to have Professor Van Son with us, who is one of the biggest names in intensive care and critical care worldwide, with a mass of publications. So, Professor, I'd like to take this wonderful opportunity to ask you to give us an overview of where are we with critical care in the world today? Oh, critical care medicine is... Um uh, is really on the upslope. It's, uh, it's really improving almost every day and uh, we are making a lot of progress. I very much like critical care medicine because it puts together the various parts of internal medicine and it allows us to combine these various um, aspects of our discipline. But this applies to the critically ill patient with the need to act very quickly and effectively. And so it's, it's, it's really, I think, the best profession in the world is to be an intensivist, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, it, it, it's good, it's nice, it's stimulating to work in this environment, and you can really have an impact on patients' well-being. So that's, that's really wonderful. There is nothing better than that. And what have been the major developments in the last decade? that make it so exciting? Oh, the developments actually are very small. These are very little steps, but when you add them one to the other, it makes a, a, a real advance in, in the field. So there is no major breakthrough. There is no new drug that will change the management of these patients completely. No, it's more a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And we improve the process very much. Communication, how to help the nurses to work better and intelligently, how we can interact for a better understanding of what the patient has and all of this together have resulted in, in better patient management, definitely. And in terms of that better patient management, obviously in the so-called developed world where we have funds, where the economies are hopefully strong, um, intensive care is not a, a cheap thing, I don't think. What about places like Africa? Well, we, uh, I, I, I was the president of the World Federation of Intensive and Critical Care Societies until very recently, so I'm the immediate past president. And during my presidency, we have done quite a bit to help people who uh, work in, uh, in less wealthy uh, parts of the world. And of course, you need to adapt, but there is quite a bit that you can do even with limited budgets. Don't forget that in our uh, wealthy societies, um, personnel is the, the highest cost. It represents about 75% of the cost in the ICU. It's not so much the monitoring systems or the respirators. You can have relatively, relatively cheap material. It's more the manpower. And the manpower may not be so costly in, uh, in Africa in particular. So there is something we can do. And actually we published some recent papers on this, on how to develop the intensive care unit in uh, relatively poor areas. Uh, and, and there are a number of things we can do to take care of these patients with, uh, when we have limited resources. And if we were having this conversation in 10 years time, what would be the major developments that would have taken place? I think that we will, um, via teaching, training, we will further improve the process of care and people will understand that they need to individualize the therapies and that will be so much better than the protocolized care that some people advocate. Just give that amount of fluids, that amount of vasoactivations, no. Uh, that's, I think, a major progress that we will make. We will have new drugs. We need new drugs, especially for severe infections, what we call sepsis, 
um, and for other abnormalities that we can find in acutely ill patients. And we will definitely develop these drugs. We will be less invasive. We will no longer need this central venous catheter and these arterial catheters thanks to better transcutaneous monitoring systems and Doppler, etc. But it's not available today, but in the future, because some people try to anticipate this. Oh, we will. No, 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 we will no longer need that. But exactly as in the future, we will no longer have to drive our car. But right now, I'm sorry, you have to drive your car. So uh, in the future, we will, be, uh, we will also be uh, less invasive. And I think there will be um, more reasonable ethical decisions because right now, in some parts of the world, uh, not especially in Africa, not especially in Europe, but in some parts of the world, people cannot stop their efforts. And that's terrible because you may have elderly patients who are clearly at the end of their life, who find themselves in the ICU with a lot of uh, machines around them when they should die peacefully. We will all die without, without critical care medicine, so we need to apply it properly. A bit earlier, we alluded to the fact that critical care medicine may not be uh, developed enough in some parts of the world. Okay, that's important, but we should not overuse it either. Uh, we must use it for the right patient at the right time. Professor, thank you so much for coming to Cape Town and sharing your enthusiasm and knowledge with us. Thank That's you. my pleasure to be here. It's my privilege. Thank you very much.